Welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. A recommendation has been made for SVG's volcano alert level to be moved from red to orange. Orange level means highly elevated level of seismic or a formalic activity or both with eruptions possible with less than 24 hours notice. Lassifre volcano was put on orange alert when it began to effusively erupt in late December 2021. The red alert level was placed on April 8th when an evacuation order was given the day before it explosively erupted on Friday, April 9th, 2021. On radio today, Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Sav said a scientist from the UWI Seismic Research Center uh, were part of a discussion at the special cabinet meeting yesterday, Tuesday, May 4th, where the issue of downgrade of the volcano alert level was raised. The Prime Minister said a final decision was to be decided at cabinet briefing today, noting that once the decision is made, only some areas in the orange zone would be reoccupied. I discussed the matter about the recommendation to go to the orange zone, to go to orange alert, sorry. I discussed it yesterday afternoon yes, uh, with the National Emergency Council. And Cabinet has to make a decision today um, because the advice is to, to go on, on orange, to orange alert, that indicating that people can go back to the, to the, to the orange area, save and accept some particular areas, obviously like Chateaubelle and Fitzhugh's where they still have a lot of ash. And we don't want people to go back where we have a lot of ash still, given, to give the government some time to clear up and to deal with some other practical socioeconomic issues on the ground and physical questions. Seismologist Dr. Roderick Stewart had earlier said that it is okay to reoccupy the orange zone in an organized manner. However, he advised against persons reoccupying the red zone. Prime Minister Gonsalves said the red zone will take some time to be cleaned up, as well as restoration of basic services. Then do uh, make sure that everything is in order in the, in the red zone, the cleanup of the ash, the return to electricity in those areas where there have been challenges. We, Gart Saunders reported that from CWS that the water, the water had been returned to fit use the day before. So Chateaubelle and fit use, they have water. They were doing the restoration up to, just trying to do that up to, to the, the orange hill really. But, but that's in the red zone because they have to sort that out at Perseverance, which is the catchment which deals with, with, with that particular partner together. A detailed assessment for the damage and losses in the red and orange zones will soon be carried out. The Lassifre volcano continues to remain quiet with no seismic activity recorded in the past 24 hours. The last eruption was on April 22, 2021. The lead scientist, seismologist Dr. Roderick Stewart, who is from the Montserrat Observatory, is expected to leave the state on Friday and a new team is expected to take over. Lloyd Lynch from Trinidad, but he's delayed. So Adam Stinson is coming down from Montserrat on Friday and then Lloyd will be here sometime next week to take Who's over. That? Adam Stinson, he, was, he came down with Dr. Christopher on the first trip that we had. So he's been here before. Okay. And, and Dr. Christopher is, is, is okay? For, is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's doing fine. You'll be hearing from him. Um, Mr. Lynch will be here next week. I'm not sure exactly what day he will take over as the team lead. Dr. Richard Robertson departed SVG last week. A scientist monitoring the last of are usually rotated. More rains are expected in a few days, according to the weather forecast, and Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves is urging persons of the public to keep a close watch on the weather pattern. The last two heavy downpour of rain brought with it lahars or mud flows, landslides and flooding, causing damage to property and other infrastructure. 
Prime Minister Gonzalves noted that his appeal is not only for people in the orange and red zones, but for the entire country. You have to even begin early to say, listen, at least people to listen carefully as we going forward yeah. every single day to the, to the weather reports. Uh, yeah, that's because true. being armed with the information about rains from this, because we have been having early rains before before the June hurricane season. Yeah. That that we we need to we need to listen very carefully, all our citizens, all our residents, to what's happening with the rainfall all over the country. Really, we have to listen because we saw what happened in Kingston, Rockies and sharps and so forth. Not just in the not just in the red zone and the orange zone, but other places across in Vincent and the Grenadines. A supplementary budget is expected to be presented in Parliament next Tuesday, intended to lend income support to persons displaced by the eruption of the Lassifer volcano. Speaking on radio this morning, Prime Minister Dr. Alf Gonsav said he met yesterday with all permanent secretaries to draft the document, noting that for the next six months, the support would cost the government more than 100 million EC dollars in expenses. Overwhelmingly, the persons when they get the income support will get the income support by, to, to buy their own food and, and, and cook and, you know what I mean, to, to do things. And you, you have to other supports may be required, but again, I come back to the to the thing that there's a a limit to the extent of the resources possessed by the government. What we are talking about here in our est in, in in the supplementary, we are talking about for the next six months expenditure in the region of about a hundred million dollars additional to what is in the existing budget. The Prime Minister said that farmers will receive income support as well as agricultural production support to get back on their feet. He, however, made it clear that it is not a, 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 a compensation sorry, for crops lost as a result of the volcanic eruption. The Prime Minister said the support will first be given to persons from the orange zone. So those in the red zone are not going to get until they, 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 we give the all clear to leave the shelter. We can't, you can't be in the shelter and, and be getting um, the, the income support. But when you, when you go out of the shelter, that income support will begin for persons in the red zone. So, and then not just the farmers, but the non-farmers would also get um, support, that's the intention. And for farmers in the orange zone, we will have some, you know, one-off payments and so forth as we have done in the past. Um, but we'll help everybody with production supports. So those in the orange zone who require production supports um, will, will, will begin to get that earlier than, say, those in the red zone because those in the orange zone are going to go home earlier. The Prime Minister said that once persons return to their homes, support will also be provided and it was recommended that food vouchers be given out rather than cash. Tools. We, we want to, to see if we can substitute the, the matter of delivering food to you with giving you a, a voucher which would be tenable at, at a range supermarkets so that you can purchase what you want to purchase. Of course, the voucher, you wouldn't be able to purchase things like rum and, and cigarette. So there are different modes of assistance that we are going to have. And the, 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 the World Food Program also going to have also some supports. PM Gonzalez said that the supplementary budget would be coming from the contingency fund and other financial institutions and does not include support from other agencies such as PAHO, Red Cross and other UN agencies. 
Vince Engines impacted by the eruption of the La Soufrière volcano will be getting over U.S. $135,000 in assistance of relief supplies, volcano monitoring, and early warning equipment under the Volcano Ready Project funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. The supplies, including 500 mattresses, 1,500 cases of bottled water, and 5,800-gallon water tanks were delivered to the country on April 29th, while the equipment, which includes seismic stations, uh, 20 wireless Ethernet radios, and remote monitoring camera, 3 GPS antennas and receivers, 1 SO2 spectrometer and for gas measurements and a Mavic 300 drone is being purchased. A project manager of the Volcano Ready Communities and SVG, Monique Johnson, said the country is grateful for CDB's support, noting that the project, which helped to increase public education, community readiness, and improve the volcano early warning system, has contributed to the reducing of the reducing to reducing the loss of lives in response to the eruption. The project was started in 2017 under the Community Disaster Risk Reduction Fund administered by CDB with finances from Canada and the European Union. Johnson noted that emphasis was placed on sharing best practices and lessons learned through online education while working with local project partners. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and the SVG Red Cross Society to, de to disseminate close to 500 community readiness kits. She also credited CDB for its ongoing role in helping the project team to convert one seismic station to seven when the focus shifted to the volcano monitoring and early warning in December 2020. CDB's project manager of uh, the Caribbean Development uh, Fund, George Yearwood, gave the assurance that the banks continue support to SVG even after the Volcano Ready project comes to an end. SVG Today observed World Hand Hygiene Day 2021 under the theme Second Saves Lives, Clean Your Hands. The May 5th annual celebrations is normally geared towards keeping patients safe in the healthcare setting, but according to infectious disease specialist Dr. Josie Davey, in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, hand hygiene has become even more important. The main aim behind the hand hygiene campaign was really to keep patients protected in the healthcare setting. But of course, all of that is now relevant because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this year, the scheme for hand hygiene may fifth, second save lives. And we are hoping that with persons continuing their hand hygiene, whether it's with liquid, with liquid soap and water or with the alcohol, they hand sanitizer at 70 percent that persons can achieve hand washing effectively or hand hygiene effectively. And Dr. Davey also reinforced that the hand washing is the cheapest preventative measure against all forms of diseases and she reminded persons of the importance of taking the time to ensure their hands are thoroughly washed and clean. In all of the proven technologies, all of the things that we can do in healthcare, hand hygiene has proven to be the single most effective way to combat diseases, to stop the spread of diseases, and hence the reason why we stress this. Yes, if persons are sick, you can give them antibiotics, but they're already sick. But if we, through our hands, we touch and we spread the diseases, then this, of course, has impact. So we're now talking about prevention. And that is the whole idea behind hand hygiene, prevention of diseases, prevention of spread of diseases. Well, hand hygiene was first commemorated globally in 2009 in SVG. Yearly campaigns have been held to educate the public on the proper methods for the washing of hands, which according to the U.S. Center for Disease Control, should be done as followed. 
Hands should be wet with clean water, then lathered by rubbing them together with soap, including the back of the hands, between the fingers, and under the nail. The hands should then be scrubbed for at least 20 seconds. A timer for this is humming the happy birthday song from beginning to end twice, following which they should be rinsed clean with clean water and towel or air dried. Mrs. Mandela Peters, daughter of the late Parnell Campbell QC, is using the opportunity to pay tribute to her beloved father and to speak about his legacy on his long-running program on SVG TV, The Law and You, which he has hosted for 24 years. Campbell's last program was number 997, recorded about two weeks prior to his death on Monday, April 19, 2021. For the last two programs, number 998 and 999, his daughter has been reflecting on his life and his last days. Peters dismisses claims that her father died from the coronavirus or COVID-19. She said that he was battling with heart issues for years, suffering multiple heart attacks. Become aware of rumors going around that he died from COVID or that he died as a result of taking the COVID-19 vaccine. And I would wish to clear the air that there's absolutely no truth to any of those rumors. Secondly, I'm also sharing because whilst my father was in hospital, one of the things that he expressed to me was that he could not wait cap and context to his illness that he was battling with for a few years. My father has a history of heart issues. In 1991, whilst as a minister in government, he suffered his first heart attack. And then again in 1993, he suffered another major heart attack. During that latter illness, he traveled to Barbados where he took part in the Stations of the Cross with a Spiritual Baptist Assembly there in Barbados. And he has testified that he received his healing there. He Peter said that the Queen's Council took ill on April 10th with high blood sugar and low blood pressure and was hospitalized on April 11th as his condition worsened. Complaints of high blood sugar and low blood pressure. He remarked to one of my family members, my sister Alpha, that he was feeling very weak and that he felt as if he were dying. That news was hard for her to take in, so she called my brother Bantu, and he repeated the same thing to him as well. They thereupon called my mother, Bishop Juliet Campbell, and he repeated that same account. He said, I am dying. I feel the Lord has been calling me for about two weeks now. And he said that the Lord was ready for him. And he told my mother that I am ready to be with the Lord. And even though he uttered those words, my mother rebuked him and said, no, you are not dying. Take your insulin, take some food, get a little strength, you are not dying. She further added that though her father was on his sick bed, his heart was on the nation and the evacuees as Lucifer volcano had erupted two days prior. Bring my Bible for me. I want my Bible to be near to me. So we knew that at the his, during his very last days, he felt that closeness and wanted that closeness with his Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. For his other request was for a radio. He wanted to tune in to NBC Radio so that he can keep updated on what was taking place with the volcano. And when I chided him, I said, Daddy, there's nothing that you can do from here in your hospital bed to assist this situation. All that you can do is get better so that when you're out of the hospital, you can assist with relief efforts and for you to spend that time while you're here praying for our nation. But he wasn't satisfied with that. 
He wanted to be in tune with everything that was taking place in our nation. He wanted to know about how the relief efforts were going, how much funding was coming in. He wanted to know what was the situation with the evacuees and those in shelters. Pierre Campbell, as he was affectionately known, has left a rich and lasting legacy. His deep and meaningful contribution to the legal profession as a skilled advocate, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs of St. Vincent and the Grenadines from 1987 to 1995, as well as his many notable contributions. These include his chairmanship of the Constitutional Reform Committee, his work in establishing the Family Court in SVG, and in spearheading legalization, which increased access to maintenance for unmarried mothers and their children, and his contribution to the comprehensive revision of the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Carnival Development Corporation, CDC, in a news release issued today, said it is deeply saddened by the passing of Fillmore Philly Dilly John, a New York-based Vincentian entrepreneur. The CDC noted that Philly Dilly entered the entertainment field as a dancehall sound system DJ, playing Jamaican reggae and dancehall music, and later transitioned into singing soca and was a natural soca artist. His most popular songs were Burn Tune and Wine Up Pon It. The CDC, said, the CDC said as well, a known and loved personality in New York area, Philly Dilly, will be missed in the entertainment circle. The SVG Calypsonians Association, SVGCA, Yolo Pan Movement, and the Carnival Bands Incorporated joins the CDC in extending condolences to his family and friends. The RSVD Police Force have today issued a wanted persons bulletin for Urias Rani Cabral, a 30 of Glen in connection with a murder investigation in which he said uh, in which he is said to be a person of interest the police bulletin said the sus the subject is a Vincentian national who is considered to be armed and dangerous and to be approached with caution Cabral is described as a dark in complexion six feet tall and slim built with an oval face brown eyes and thick lips he has a tattoo on both hands. People who see Cabral or know of his whereabouts are asked to call 456-1339 or 457-1211 or 456-1810 or any police station in SVG. The police says calls will be treated confidentially.